keep yourself on mute. And um, I have um, Nicholas and, uh, and Anafia's co-hosts. Uh, one of you has to do the mute and unmute. One of you has to do the mute and unmute. And then the recording, who's doing the recording? I'm doing the recording. Doing the recording, okay, fine. Um, then um, if you have any question in the process of, uh, of the presentation, just keep writing them in the chat. Write the questions in the chat, we will read them at the appropriate time. Uh, then uh, you will also be required to register. Maybe I will ask, I don't know whether Anafi or Nicholas to tell us the new, the new way of registration this time around. Do people have to do it differently from always? You have always been doing it under the chat box. Is it different this time around? No, the registrations are still through the chat box. You kindly no. tell us your name, title, and the country. Your name, title, and the country. And if you are more than one at your, at your station or your connection, please write the others as well. We want to take track of how many people are on the call. Um, then uh, uh, at the end of it, we will have a session of uh, reactions. That's when your questions will be re read, whatever is in the chat. If the question is not in the chat, you will, uh, by show of hand, you will uh, signal so that we can know who else needs to say something. Otherwise, today we are delighted. We are having, this is our third, not so our third session. Uh, the waste management uh, uh, trainings. You know, waste management is becoming more pronounced, especially for HIV viral load as the numbers, uh, number of tests scale up, the wastes we generate uh, also scales up. And usually per test, we generate more waste than even the actual input for, for, our, for our tests. So the waste that is generated because besides the reagent, there are so many other consumers that go along with the tests, meaning that uh, the volume of waste that is generated per single test becomes big. But uh, now if you are doing now tests in, now in millions, so the waste becomes in, 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 uh, in uh, hundreds or thousands of, uh, of kilograms of waste that are being generated. So because of that, that's why the International Laboratory Branch uh, working with the SLM through the LabCorp uh, project set up to do these eco sessions. And this is our third eco session where we are handling waste management training. And we want to thank the International Laboratory Branch who are spearheading this and uh, Anafi from the LabCorp team who has been working to coordinate uh, the, 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 the calls and the correspondences related to this. So today we are delighted to have a subject matter expert by the names of Katrina Suleiman, who is going to take us through this session. If you are not speaking, we will ask you to be on mute. So I will now give the floor to our subject matter experts who is going to take us in the next 20 or so minutes before we will begin the discussion. So, uh, Katrina, you are welcome to take us on. Thank you, Charles. Yeah. Okay, so, let's just go back up. Can everyone see the slides okay? No, no, you have moved from the slides. Okay. You see Okay, yeah, you're back on okay. the slides. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so uh, my name is Katrina Sleeman. I work with the Viral Load and Early Infant Diagnosis team here at the CDC in Atlanta. So today we're going to be discussing a checklist tool that we've been developing in collaboration with our international partners. 
The tool is for waste management considerations, specifically for viral load and early infant diagnosis, testing laboratories, and health associated healthcare facilities. So the overview of today's presentation will cover the purpose and intended use of this waste management checklist tool, how to complete this waste management tool, the five sections that this tool covers, and then we'll be going over a very brief summary. So the purpose of the waste management tool. So the purpose of this collaborative tool is to assist in creating awareness of the best practices and identifying gaps for waste management processes in HIV molecular testing laboratories and associated healthcare facilities. And these healthcare facilities could be those sites that are performing near point of care and point of care testing for early infant diagnosis and viral load. Another aim of this tool is to generate a baseline assessment for each site in the country to help develop a way forward for LabCorp countries in implementing best practices specifically for HIV viral load and early infant diagnosis waste management. This tool is recommended to be completed by site managers, safety officers, quality officers or equivalent individuals for making decisions on how the assessed site can develop and implement best practices for their particular location. So going over now, com completion of the tool. So you will fill in a copy of the checklist tool for each testing laboratory or testing facility site, including those for point of care or near point of care testing. You will list and fill all data for all of the viral load and EID testing labs and associated healthcare facilities in your country. This is including all PEPFAR supported and non-PEPFAR supported sites. The tool has been divided into five subsections. Subsection one covers waste management standard operating procedures, policies and practices. Subsection two covers training. Subsection three covers safety. Subsection four covers HIV molecular testing instruments. And subsection five covers HIV molecular testing instrument waste. So as you go through the checklist tool, you will select yes if the entire question is fulfilled at that site that you are assessing. You will select no if none of the question is fulfilled at that particular site. And you will go ahead and select partial if part of the practices are in place or if practices are in place but not documented or if practices are not followed despite procedures being in place. You will then be able to add notes explaining any responses or additional useful information in the comments section at the end of each question. There is also a summary section at the end of each of the five subsections where you can summarize the findings from the subsection. So now we're going to go through the draft version of this checklist tool. Subsection one covers the waste management SOPs, policies and practices. Question one is, is a facility healthcare waste management policy in place and enforced? Question two, if a waste management procedure is in place, is it followed and enforced? The next question, is there an SOP for the disposal of infectious waste? And following up from that, is there an SOP for the disposal of non-infectious waste? Is there an SOP for the disposal of chemical waste? Is there an SOP for the use of an on-site incinerator if one exists at that particular site? Or if there is an autoclave on site, is there an SOP for the use of that? Is there an SOP for the tracking of the amount of waste accumulated, disposed of and destroyed from each facility? So going back to question one, is the facility healthcare waste management policy in place and enforced? If a policy is in place and it is being routinely enforced and used by staff, then here you would check yes. If no waste care management policy is in place and one isn't practiced, then you would check no. If you do have a healthcare waste management policy in place, but it is not followed all the time, 
or if you do follow practices but it is not documented, then you would check partial here. And in the comments section, you would explain your partial response. Subsection two covers training. Have all personnel performing HIV molecular testing at the facility received bloodborne pathogen and or shops management safety training? Bloodborne pathogen training would cover anything to do with um, infectious um, organisms that you could contract from blood. For example, HIV, hepatitis, malaria, among others. Have all personnel performing HIV molecular testing at the facilities received training on managing healthcare associated and chemical wastes? And then following on from these questions, did the training include the types of healthcare associated waste and how to properly identify and segregate these wastes for disposal? The hazards associated with healthcare associated waste. What is the difference between infectious and non-infectious waste? And how do you segregate infectious and non-infectious waste? How and where different types are accumulated and stored at the facility? Chemical waste disposal procedures. What is considered chemical waste? Compatibility of different chemical waste streams generated at the site. Handling and disposing of solid waste versus liquid waste? Are appropriate waste containers for accumulation and storage of waste covered? Is the labeling of waste containers covered so that you have been trained on listing the contents of the waste? Ensuring that the, con uh, the waste containers used are leak proof and that they are kept closed when not in use. Location and use of a chemical spill kit. And lastly, did the training cover the location of chemical hygiene plans and laboratory waste guidance? In addition to testing staff, it is important that janitorial staff that collect healthcare associated waste and your chemical waste from the facilities are trained in biosafety and the use of appropriate personal protection. Did the training cover the training cover the training? Okay. <laughs> is all training documented and are records maintained in the employee folder or binder? And lastly, is an, an, an annual safety refresher training provided and documented for each employee? And this is not just staff performing testing, but also the janitorial staff. Subsection three covers safety. Is liquid waste and solid waste segregated in laboratories and testing sites? Is there a biological spill kit and associated SOP available? Is there a chemical spill kit and associated SOP available? Is there a chemical hygiene plan? And following on from this, is there a chemical inventory available? Are current safety data sheets, known as SDSs, available for the chemicals and reagents that are used at that particular testing site or facility? Is liquid waste stored and collected in labeled, puncture-proof, sealed, leak-proof containers? Are waste containers labeled correctly to facilitate appropriate waste segregation? Once solid and liquid waste containers are full, are those containers brought to a secure central location for either transport or off-site destruction? Is accumulated waste transported to a separate facility either on-site or off-site? Are areas where liquid and solid waste is generated and stored, firstly, are they organized? And secondly, non-porous, are non-porous and durable for disinfection practices available in case of a spill? For example, are your containers placed within, um, on top of something where if a spill was to occur, it is easily disinfectable? For example, not wood. Are liquid waste containers stored in secondary containers to prevent leakage in case the primary container becomes damaged or due to accidental overfilling? And lastly, are accident or incident reports managed and maintained? So now we're going on to probably the most important section, sections four and five. Section four covers HIV molecular testing instruments. 
So question 28 refers to conventional high throughput testing platforms. So here we would like you to list platforms that you have at that particular site or laboratory by each of these manufacturers. So for example, for Abbott, if you have the Abbott M2000 platform under your response, you would write the type of platform, which would be the M2000, and then the number that you have at that particular location. For Hologic, if you have an Aptima Panther, you would write down the number of Panthers you have at that site. And for Roche, if you also had Roche Cap CTMs, the Cobus Amphiprep, Cobus Tacman, or a 4800, or a 68800 platform, you would then write that down and the number at the site. For Biomeria, if you have the Nuclear Sense platform, you would write that down. So here we've just written the manufacturer, so it enables you to write down the actual model you have from the manufacturer and the number of those models at each site. For point of care testing, there are only two that PEPFAR is approving right now, and that is the MPIMA, which was formerly called the ALEA-Q, and the Gene Expert. So here, like question 28, you would write down the number of these platforms that you have at each of the sites. So the final question in this subsection is what is the volume of testing on each of these platforms or instruments per month at each of the testing facilities? So at the location that you are assessing using this checklist, you would write down the volume of testing on each of these platforms per month. And the reason why we are asking for this is from this data, we can estimate the amount of liquid and solid waste that is being generated at each site from each platform, which will really help us um, gather the critical information on the volume and how we can best assist the countries with developing waste management processes. The final subsection, section five, covers HIV molecular testing instrument waste. The first question is, biohazardous or infectious waste separated from non-infectious waste in laboratories and testing facilities at the point of generation. And by this, we mean the room where the testing is actually occurring, not once it has been transferred from the laboratory or from the healthcare clinic. What method of solid biohazardous or healthcare associated waste disposal is currently in use at each of the testing facilities or laboratories? So if you use multiple different um, techniques, then please let us know which ones are being used. So for example, is waste transported for di disposal off site? And if so, is it disposed of by incineration, autoclaving, open pit burning, landfills, or by encapsulation? And if it is disposed of on site, is it through incineration, autoclaving, or by open pit burning? Then where autoclaves and incinerators are being used, we would like to know if those are regularly serviced and if documents are maintained. In addition, are preventative maintenance services performed and documented? Are these pieces of critical equipment under service contracts? Are these pieces of equipment operated by trained staff in performing procedures for the autoclaves and incinerators? And lastly, the staff that operate these instruments, are they trained in proper biosafety procedures? Following on from these questions, how is liquid chemical waste currently disposed of in laboratories and facilities using conventional viral load EID testing platforms. So again, these are traditionally your high throughput platforms, typically manufactured by Roche, Nucle um, Biomeria, Abbott, and Hologic. Is the waste transported to disposal off site, again, either by incineration, autoclaving, open burning, landfills, or by encapsulation? Or is the liquid waste disposed of on site through incineration, autoclaving, or open pit burning? Waste combined from multiple instruments or other waste streams or processes at the testing laboratory or facility. And by this we mean, um, for example, if a testing laboratory is located in a hospital, is the waste from the testing laboratory combined with other waste from the hospital? 
or is it combined with waste from other equipments that are maybe doing blood chemistry analysis? If liquid is being poured down a sink, is there an SOP that is followed at the site? And following on from this, does the runoff from the sink, that is where the waste is being poured down, go directly into a sewer system? Does the waste from the sink accumulate with other waste streams from the same testing facility? Again, this is a follow-up from a, the previous question. For example, if the laboratory shares waste water systems with a, a large hospital or with other platform. Are there any waste management companies currently operating in your country? Sorry, I just skipped one question. Is bleach mixed with all liquid waste that is generated at the site? Are there any waste management companies outside of your country that are currently contracted to transport and dispose of waste, either within your country or outside of your country? And are there managed landfill sites? And if so, are these landfill sites owned and operated by your government or are they private entities? Are there incinerators in country? And are there any in-country partners that can help with waste management or that may be already focusing their efforts on addressing your country's needs? So I appreciate that was a lot of information in a short time. I just want to summarize what we have just discussed. So this waste management tool is still in a draft format. We are awaiting feedback on this checklist tool from several international partners. But most importantly, as participants on today's call, we would like to hear your thoughts, comments, and suggestions on the functionality of this checklist tool and how we can improve it. So thank you for listening. And I think Charles will now direct the discussion. Charles, you're on mute. Charles, you're on mute. Okay, I've unmuted. Okay. Yeah, uh, Katrina, thank you very much. You were very clear and very audible. Um, everything was quite, was very clear. Thank you very, very much. Uh, before we go into the question and answer or reaction session, I'll ask Anafi to give uh, a few remarks. Uh, thank you, Charles, and thank you, everyone, for coming in, in numbers as usual. Um, just want to uh, add to what Katrina has uh, mentioned to say um, this is uh, one a unique way we have tried to see if we can be able to get the thoughts of everyone with regards to um, this tool. Um, so basically today it was to present to you uh, sort of a checklist that we can uh, all together use as a baseline or even later on as, as follow up. Uh, this tool, as uh, Kat has mentioned, is in a draft form. So this is not final. Uh, and we are intending to solicit feedback from you um, to see how best we can improve it so that this becomes one of those tools that has been um, given input from many different uh, partners. So um, before we open this, uh, we, we are saying here, um, if you can uh, tell us what you think with the basis that this tool is city-based uh, currently in this form, we also acknowledge that uh, some questions will be coming in into national uh, relevance. So I just wanted to give that background uh, in terms of the purpose of today's uh, meeting in presenting this tool is to get more feedback from you uh, in terms of um, how relevant this tool will be uh, as most of you are actually on the ground in. Uh, over to you, Charles and Nicholas, for the... Okay, uh, thank you very much, Anaki. Thank you very much, Anafi. Uh, there's some feedback, I don't know from where. Uh, Nicholas, I think you mute. Uh, yes, thank you, uh, Anafi, for uh, giving um, context uh, of, uh, of the presentation that uh, 
uh, Katrina has given. We have been looking at uh, the draft waste management checklist, the kind that can help to collect information from uh, the country team, from, from the country labs. Probably uh, uh, they will give us reactions that are going to come on how it should be used. Is it per lab? Is it for a country? Is it uh, uh, at, at, at what level and by which stakeholders do we expect to collect this information? But basically to give us baseline and also uh, continuous tracking and monitoring of, uh, of, our, of our facilities and our waste management practices as a way to, you know, to monitor. Uh, the practice. Thank you very much uh, for sharing this draft. Um, I hope uh, that uh, brief overview gives people some 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 uh, ground against which to to ask questions. But probably maybe after, for more objective input, you may have to share the tool to all of us so that uh, people can have in depth. Uh, look at at whatever is in there and uh, see whether it needs more additional information or rewarding or re redesigning as uh, may be the case. So I open this up to the discussion. I know there have been questions coming through the chats and Nicholas has been monitoring our chat. Uh, so I will ask him to read out the questions. If you have not been able to put your question, you will also have a chance to actually indicate by uh, by show of hands so that we can call on you to ask your question or to make a submission. Nicholas? Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Chais. The first question is from uh, Cedric Wele, and uh, he is saying, hello, what's going on here? Is this a survey stock, a questionnaire to be carried at different facilities in different countries? Or oh, what is it? I joined late and I'm just seeing the questions to be filled. I think uh, he missed the, the preamble and the introduction to the questionnaire, but I think uh, the presenter will answer that. Hi, thank you very much for your question. So this is a checklist tool that we have developed in collaboration and that is still in draft format. The idea is that this checklist will be made available so that countries can use it at each site or healthcare facility where testing using either conventional platforms for viral load in EID or point of care or near point of care platforms. The idea is that it will be used to uh, create a baseline assessment in country to identify gaps that are there specifically for HIV viral load waste management when it comes to the testing platforms and also to help develop and implement best practices. So I hope that answered your question, sir. Okay, thank you very much. The other question is from, uh, is from uh, Pam Pile and is asking, uh, do the sites who are going to complete the survey have baseline information on the type of waste generated per method used? Some technologies don't produce GITC and could be disposed of via standard hazardous loads vis-a-vis. -vis. I'm repeating the question. Do the sites who are going to complete the survey have baseline information on the type of waste generated per method used? Some technologies don't produce GITC and could be disposed of via standard biohazardous loads vis-a-vis. Hi, thank you, Pam, for your question. And Pam is correctly um, stating that some of the technologies used do not contain GTC. For example, the point of care using the MPIMA or a LAIR-Q. Um, the point of this checklist tool, again, is to generate the baseline assessment. If countries do have any questions on what particular chemicals, the platforms that they are using contain, then they can either reach out to their local manufacturer representative they can check the SDS available online through all the manufacturers or they can reach out to this forum where we can assist with that 
But Pam is correct, not every platform or device used for HIV viral load in EID does contain GTC, but the vast majority do, unfortunately. Thank you for your question. Those are the questions so far we have in the, in the, in the chat box. Sorry, there is uh, one from uh, Lillian. She has just sent it right now, Lillian Gu. And she's asking, uh, is there an associated scoring and or interpretation guide? Is there an associated scoring and stroke or an interpretation guide? So thank you for your question, Lillian, and to Nicholas for reading it out. So at this time, there is no associated scoring with this checklist. We had um, discussion um, internally and with implementing partners. And at this time, we have decided not to include scoring. We're just going to look at um, using this to assess baseline um, and to identify deficiencies or gaps. And yes, and to enable improvements. Once this checklist is in a finalized version, there will be an instructions um, associated with it and an implementation guide. And I'm sure there will be uh, training as well, like this platform, so that everyone can feel confident in the way that they are um, using it and interpreting it. Thank you. Okay, thank you. The other question is from uh, Jonathan Keitel, and she's asking, uh, can a question be added to assess the burden of obsolete instruments within labs and programs? These are also an important waste type to be managed. She's asking, can a question be added to assess the burden of obsolete instruments within labs and programs? These are also an important waste type to be managed. This is such a hot topic and it is a really um, awesome question that you asked. We are already, um, from CDC point of view, we have already been in discussion with a couple of the manufacturers who are either phasing out existing platforms to roll in um, newer models and also um, with manufacturers that have, as you stated, you know, left um, broken pieces of equipment within country. Um, it, it is a critical concern. It should not be upon the site to dispose of these pieces of equipment, in my opinion. And this is something that, yes, we should definitely include a question to capture this information because it is, it is an issue. So thank you. Yeah, the other question is from uh, Sadra Kwede asking again, do you want the participants to review the document since it is in a draft form? or you would want it to be implemented. If it has to be implemented in its current form, what is your targeted group? To be filled as a country or at site level? Yeah, it's asking once again, do you want the participants to review the document since it is in a draft form, or you want it to be implemented? If it has to be implemented in its current form, what is your targeted group? to be filled as a country or at a site level? Thank you for your question. So at this moment, it is not to be implemented because it is still, as um, we have stated, in its draft form. We would like participants to review and provide their feedback, but please do not implement it as it is in its current form because it is still in a draft format. Once the document is ready to be implemented, we will share it with an implementation guide, instructions, and with some sort of training associated. The idea is that it will be implemented by LabCorp countries at the site level, but we are um, discussing including as an additional subsection at the very beginning, which will cover this, um, the country overall. So it will look like at the national level and then the checklist as we went through it today will be specific for each site or healthcare associated facility. I hope this clarifies. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, the, the other question is from uh, Clement Nogumo and is asking, uh, we understand the tool will be used independently by countries. 
is there a plan to compile the data centrally for analysis and global monitoring of the progress made across countries? Once again, we understand the tool will be used independently by countries. Is there a plan to compile the data centrally for analysis and global monitoring of the progress made across countries? Hi, Clement, that is an excellent question. Um, at this time, we will not be asking for the data back. It is something for the countries to use within their, their country and to help guide discussions internally. Um, we are anticipating that the tool will be finalized for distribution with, within approximately a month. Um, but at this time, um, it is for use by the country themselves because we feel that way the country is more open to discussing any issues that they may be having or for identifying gaps. Thank you for your question, Clement. It's good to hear from you. Thank you very much. Uh, those are the questions that are, are in the chat box. Uh, back to the moderator for those who have questions or comments to say. Yeah, there's another question on um, disposing of expired reagents. Is that uh, covered within the tool? If not, isn't it a viable question? This is another fantastic question. Thank you so, so much. And yes, it is definitely something that needs to be included. And thank you for bringing it up because many countries I have traveled to have had this issue. So thank you to whoever raised that question. It was a definite oversight on our part. So thank you so much. It's definitely going to be added along with the one about the disposal of obsolete equipment. So thank you guys. These are great suggestions. Keep them coming. <laughs> Okay, there are, there are two more questions in the chat. Uh, the first one is from uh, Clifford Muru, and he's saying, uh, it looks like only two point of care platforms, in brackets, MPIMA and GeneXpert, are listed in the checklist. Are there any other POC platforms that produce GITC, which are not included in the checklist? If yes, what about them? Or what about other POC platforms that also produce waste? That's a great question. So at the moment, we have only included those um, point of care platforms that are funded by PEPFAR, that are endorsed by PEPFAR. Um, what we can definitely do is like question 28, where we were looking at the high throughput platforms, the conventional platforms, we can add an uh, other for that question on point of care and then you can include those if you would like to. As I said before, the MPIMA, previously known as ILIA-Q, does not contain GTC, but there are other near point of care testing um, devices which could be used which do contain GTC. So we will definitely go in and add others so you can go ahead and capture that information for your country analysis. Thank you, another great point. This is awesome, thank you guys. Okay, thank you very much. Another good question is from uh, S. Mwaki and is asking, uh, is it a must that section one should have all those specific standard operating procedures, so all one policy document addressing all the requirements can be sufficient. Repeating it, is it a must that section one should have all those specific SOPs, or one policy document addressing all the requirements can be sufficient? So yes, um, this is another great question. If you have one standard operating procedure that covers all of those items, then that is fine. The main thing is that each of these items is addressed and covered. Um, one definite advantage of having a single SOP is that when it comes to providing updates, it is much easier to update one document, one SOP compared to multiple SOPs. So I think the take home message here is just to make sure that you are um, have an SOP in place for each of these um, sections, you know, each of these procedures, for example, the waste management, the disposal, the segregation, the training, for example. Thank you. Another good question. Thank you very much. 
Uh, those are the questions in the chat. Uh, back to the moderator for those who may be having verbal comments or questions. Thank you. Okay, um, thank you very much for those of us who have put in questions into the chat. Is there anyone you want to make a comment uh, that uh, was not in the chat? We could give you a chance. Um, whilst people are, are still thinking of uh, making a comment, I just wanted to reiterate uh, the main points that have been mentioned. Um, that whilst we are all having so much concern on GITC, uh, we should not forget, uh, I think, the other elements of waste management. That's why you also see that the two is also kind of comprehensive. It's also going beyond the elements of uh, GITC. We also touch the elements of generation. We touch the elements of whether there is an off-site um, disposal facility. Um, so those are the things that we are trying to assess and see whether there is enough capacity uh, out there. And, 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 and we are hoping that, as, as Kate mentioned, this too is for assessment as well as, as, well as raising awareness uh, by asking uh, those, those questions uh, through this checklist. So we are hoping that I think uh, through the feedback that we get, it can be as in its best form as possible uh, to be implemented in a couple of countries and we will continue to improve upon it uh, based on, on the feedback that we get. Uh, a couple of questions were coming uh, around uh, which instruments do we have uh, GITC uh, and I just wanted to also make reference to our previous uh, session where we had a table uh, in which uh, David shared uh, quite a number of technologies and what is available in there. So we may also want to uh, make reference to that. We are posting these uh, 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 tools and presentations on the ASLM website, it's ready. I think uh, we should be sharing immediately after this call uh, or tomorrow, uh, where you can always go back to these presentations and, and, and check uh, where they are. Uh, we want to have this platform as a knowledge sharing platform, uh, as well as uh, this subject. Um, so just a few remarks that I wanted to say, uh, if they are Okay. Um, yes, thank you. Thank you very much for um, giving uh, that uh, again additional contextualizing the discussion. Uh, uh, is there, it seems like nobody has indicated that they have uh, a reaction. Probably uh, we may need to, you have um, some information around countries that need TA and uh, what is happening. And, uh, Anafi? <laughs> the TA thing, eh? I think you are muted. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry, can I? Is it possible for me to just add one thing? Um, just following on from what Anafi said about how we shouldn't just be focusing on GTC, I think it really is shocking. When I first started um, following up on the waste management aspect with relation to viral load in EID about three years ago, the amount of solid waste that is generated by the testing laboratory, especially uh, pipette tips, from the instruments that are pretty sharp, but the solid waste alone is staggering. So I think it's important to not just focus on the liquid waste and the, the GTC content, but the, the testing process as a whole. So thank you, um, Anafi. And it would be really great to hear feedback um, from our participants as well to see if they think this will actually be useful and functional, or if it's just, um, you know, like another checklist or a tool, and if it really won't help the situation. So maybe when you provide feedback on the questions, we will definitely include the questions that have, have been suggested today. They're all excellent. But maybe also think, you know, from um, 
a user point of view, is are they, are they hitting all the right areas and do you think it will really help um, change things? So thank you. Okay, thank you, Kate. Um, so coming back to the element of TA, uh, we acknowledge there are a few countries that made um, voluntary submissions and uh, we have not forgotten we are coming back uh, to you. Uh, the analysis has been done on who has requested what. So internal discussions are being done on how best this could be done. And we'll be coming back to you um, in the next couple of weeks. And one of the things is uh, feedback coming from this tool uh, would also be part of, of that DA. So I think we'll officially get back to the countries in question. Uh, that have uh, formally submitted those requests and uh, outline how best this will be done. Okay. So um, that is a great uh, discussion. Uh, unless if there was any other within the chat, kindly okay. Some other communication. So uh, maybe maybe um, just to inquire about mm. uh, about uh, the the the, uh, the tool what is the way forward or the next action items regarding the tool what should the community know as the way forward or the action items is it going to be shared on mail is it and if it is going to be shared what are the timelines for the inputs okay uh, Nicholas, there is another question in the chat uh, as well. Yeah, there is another question which I'm going to read after getting a response to that. Thank you. Katrina? Yes, so Anafi, um, maybe Anafi can speak to this because I know that we are awaiting input from um, international partners. So I think I might we discuss how best this is going to be shared for um, additional input by the participants from today's call. Thank you. Okay, thank you yes. very much. Anafi, Anafi is going to say something. <laughs> how, okay. how would you, um, Shelly, you want to go first? Uh, yes, I, I think what we would prefer since we have uh, sent this out to a few international partners to get input. Um, this is not supposed to be just a uh, CDC ASLM collaboration. We want to in involve those uh, stakeholders and those uh, from the international community partners that we normally work with to uh, have input so that this would be a combined effort. We've asked for, uh, we're hoping to get some feedback and make corrections within the next few weeks. And if we can share this in one month in a uh, in, in better form with inputs from everybody, I think it would be a better tool. Um, so if we could just wait to uh, not utilize this until we have those inputs, and we have requested that already, but it will be forthcoming. Um, and then, Anaf, are you going to share then? So I think uh, Kat mentioned that we would hope to try to finalize this within a month's time frame. Um, and then send it out, and it could be put on the ASLM website uh, once we have that. So that would be available to, to everyone who, who wants it, um, not just those who are on the call. And uh, Anafi, did you want to speak to the next session that we're planning for uh, next month? Luca is going to. Anafi? Charles? Which is. Okay, I think Anafi has got some connectivity uh, challenge. Uh, then there was a question. Yeah, there is a question in the chat box, uh, which is from Lillian Gu. Uh, I don't know whether this is read as Gu. <laughs> Maybe I'll get some clarification afterwards. But anyway, the question is, uh, in terms of being useful to countries, I think it would be helpful to link each question or group of questions to resources, or even cite specific sections of resources, stock templates, etc. The question is, I think it's a comment. In terms of being useful to countries, 
I think it would be helpful to link each question or group of questions to resources or even cite specific sections of resources, stroke templates, and so on. Thank you. She says I pronounced it right. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Anafi, would you want to say the next session? Unmute. Yes, uh, thank you very much, Charles. Uh, so um, I'm also excited to mention that we also we are going to have the next session and about the same time, uh, usually the first day, days of uh, the next month is June. And we are lining up some exciting uh, materials. We are going to go into country-based uh, experiences. Uh, and uh, we are looking towards looking at the experiences from Mozambique and a couple of other countries. And we'll be talking about the utility of cement factories uh, when it comes to uh, the issues of waste management and how we can be able to tap on um, a slightly, uh, I think, different industry, but related, and see how uh, this is being made use in, in some countries. Uh, so um, we hope you are going to be joining us. I promise it to be an exciting um, session. And uh, the next couple of sessions will also be more, more and more into country uh, activities. Uh, we hope to get to uh, hear more from uh, each other from one another, which is the goal of this of this platform. So I think um, that's what I have here for now. Um, Nicholas, do you have anything before we? I think um, I think I, I, it's time for us to get some updates on what is uh, what is upcoming. Well, we are going to be uh, sharing with you the next, uh, I mean, the, the session for, for this month, the general lab pop session. We are going to be sending out the communications uh, soon. Be on the watch out for them. Um, then um, thank you for the team for, 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 for the interesting discussion we have had. Uh, this is just a reminder to the country teams uh, that um, at this moment, our countries are working on continuous applications for the partners who are doing, uh, who are involved in the interventions in uh, HIV uh, interventions supported through PEPFA. So the COP19 uh, uh, process is now on at the, at the point of continuous uh, uh, continuous uh, uh, applic application for for, 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 for for the following uh, funding. So this is a critical time, especially to use the decision making matrix for the four thematic areas that uh, we said from the survey that we did should be you know, one of the, 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 the focus areas, that is demand creation, results utilization, network optimization, and, and waste management. So we have that, uh, uh, I mean, that uh, decision-making matrix that we developed in the first-to-first -first meeting in Uganda. We circulated it to all the country teams. Please make sure that uh, your partners, your IPs, that are working on their follow-on funding, their continuation application, have got this as a tool on their side as they, they are breaking down their, 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 their plan into activities. So they can refer to it and make sure that those particular areas are sufficiently covered. Uh, we've been doing impact assessments, uh, getting feedback from countries, and we have done for most of the countries, apart from a few, apart from about four countries uh, that uh, have not yet done impact assessment. And uh, we, we, we hope you work very fast to make sure that we arrange the call uh, to do the impact assessment. We so far have four countries that have not yet done this. 
uh, and uh, we are still following up and waiting on on you to make sure that we arrange the call so that we can get a feedback from you on how a lab corp and app programming uh, meeting uh, your expectation or not, and what should we do differently moving forward to meet more of your expectation. So countries like Zambia, Tanzania, DRC, and South Sudan, uh, we are still working with you and would want to quickly fix up these calls so that we can pick the impact because you are the only one still remaining and we want to capture all the countries that at least have been participating the past one year or so. That feedback is very important for us to see the way forward as we plan for how to, to support you. Uh, then I know we have the International AIDS Conference coming in in July, and we would want to know of, the, of our community members how many of us will be in Mexico. You can actually drop me a mail to indicate that. We want to have like a side meeting where we are just going to meet and have some interaction, uh, have some bit of uh, uh, updates on what is happening, uh, have a light moment together, rub shoulders as a community. So we would want to know who is going to be in Mexico. It will help us in the planning so that we plan for you very well for that light moment that we are going to have. Please, if you are going to be in Mexico or you know of your country team, uh, that is the country team member that is going to be in Mexico, uh, drop, drop me a mail. And uh, that will be very important for us as uh, we plan uh, for that side meeting that uh, we plan to have in, uh, in Mexico. Otherwise, um, uh, all, all, all um, our usual routine efforts continue. Uh, unless if there is, I don't know, I'm seeing some more communication is in the chat. Is there any question once again? The last one, we have like two minutes. Nicholas, have you seen any question? Okay. No, there so, is no question in the chat. Except uh, maybe to inform the members that we have uh, a WhatsApp group specifically these sessions on waste management, very interactive. Uh, you can send a WhatsApp message uh, to, 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 one or to, to the number that has been running in the chat box, and then you'll be added to the group. For some of the materials, the presentations, the sessions, they are either shared through the WhatsApp group or put on the SLM website page. Thank you very much. Okay, and this particular presentation will also be shared. So uh, check out on the resource page uh, in the next few days. You'll be, if you are not able, if you have somebody who has not been able to actually be on the session, they can actually go and uh, pick this, the presentation that has been recorded. Otherwise, Katrina and team, thank you very, very much uh, for, for sharing uh, uh, for, for the materials uh, over this uh, this session. Maybe what I didn't, the final bit is that uh, our inputs will be after the, the global stakeholders have been, have, have done their input. And who is going to share that so that we know at which time are the country teams making inputs into the tool. Just as a final one before we close. Hello. So I think maybe Anafi will be leading the sharing of the document once we've had all input from the international stakeholders and once we've included these excellent suggestions from today's discussion. Okay. Okay, fine, fine. Thank you very much. So we'll wait for Anafi at the appropriate time to, to share the tool and then the country teams can make inputs and uh, uh, share it back such that uh, we, quick, we, we, we quickly make our inputs and uh, get it through and eventually have a final document that can be on our resource page. Thank you very much, uh, team, for this very informative discussion. 
So I wish to close the discussion at this point. We've been exactly on time. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thank you all. Bye. 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 Bye.